Good morning, River of Life Community Fellowship. It is time for our Monday edition of Sunday School, where we have a short daily devotion since we can't meet for Sunday School. Now, this last Sunday, yesterday, I talked about um, the attributes of God, the nature of God. And like I, I talked a little bit about his, about the Trinity and what that means. And then I hit five other aspects of God, five other characteristics of God. And I promised to come back and talk about them during our Sunday school time. So this is what I'm doing. Today, we're going to talk about the Trinity. And that is the idea that God is one, yet God is also three separate beings. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now that, like I said, that, as I said yesterday, that is a hard concept to understand and like theologians have been talking about it trying to figure out good ways to explain it and they they've come up with some ways but none of them have ever been like good ways of understanding it and so i just i want to share a little bit about the scriptural um understanding for the trinity and then also share one way that i think about that helps me understand how this whole thing works. So the the scriptural thing, I think one of the things that I think is very important to understand about God is that God is one. Like that is a, a foundational scripture throughout both Jewish and Christian faith. Um, and we read about it in Deuteronomy 6, 4, and this is what it says. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now the, the word Lord, whenever we see it in the Old Testament is, as uh, um, all caps, um, that that is the um, proper name for God as the Jews see it, and it, the the word means like to exist, and so it basically says you know what God exists, and when uh, God starts like I am the one who exists, I am, like that that's who God is, and so so it says here like the 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 Hebrew word is Yahweh. And generally, the, our Bibles say Lord because the Jews were so afraid of taking God's name in vain that they wouldn't even say it. Even when they were reading Scripture and they come across it, rather than saying Yahweh, they would say Adonai, which means Lord, which means the one in charge. And so, and so that like that that's why that's there. But there there's some things that I want to point out in this verse that are very important to understand. So this verse says, "Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God." Yahweh is one. That that's that's what it says. And so he, here's the thing that I want to point out. The word God here, Yahweh is God. The word God here is plural. It's not a singular word. It, it's the plural word for God. And so what it's saying here is Yahweh, our gods, Yahweh is one. And so like that that's like the first one of the first indications that we see that there is this thing called the Trinity that there's more than just this one single being but this multiple beings is one. And so you know and like we we kind of see some other places where that really shows, shows up like in Genesis 126 where you know, getting ready to create humans and this is what God said in Genesis 126 then God said let us make man in our image after our likeness. So that, that's kind of like a plural thing. He didn't say, let me make man in my image, in my likeness. He said, let us make man in our image. And, <clears throat> you know, we, we see some different things throughout the Old Testament, but I think it, it really becomes a little, a lot more clear that these are three separate things in the New Testament. We see that John, um, there's a number of verses that where we see it, but I think John 15, 16 is a very good one that I want to talk about today. <clears throat> and this is what it says. And this is Jesus talking. Oh, sorry, it's John 15, 26, not 15, 16. It's 15, 26. And Jesus talking, but he says, when the helper comes, and this is, that's talking about the Holy Spirit, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. So Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit as someone separate than himself. And he's talking about God the Father as someone separate from himself. And so, and and, and he's talking about how the Holy Spirit is separate from God as well, because the Father will send the Holy Spirit. The Father, he didn't say the Father will send himself, he said the Father will send the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will bear witness about Jesus. And so we see there that there's three separate things that are three separate beings there. But 
the Lord, are, the Lord is God. The Lord is one. And that, that's such an important thing because <clears throat> like they're separate, but they are one. They're totally, completely, and fully encompassed in each other. And that is where this whole concept gets confusing. How, how can they be three separate, but yet be one? <clears throat> and I think part of the understanding, part of one thing that has helped me understand it is understanding a little bit about the difference between Jewish culture and Greek culture. And it's important to understand because as Westerners, our Western civilization comes really is, is an offshoot of the Greek civilization. Like we, we are like direct descendants of the Greek civilization. And so the, the Greek way of thinking has affected Western civilization for 2000 years now. <clears throat> and so the Greek way of thinking can be summed up in the words thesis, antithesis. It's this way or it's that way, one or the other, not the same. But Jewish thinking, Hebrew thinking was a little bit different. They had this concept of this and that. Rather than the Greek thinking of this or that, they had the concept of this and that. It can be this and it can be that too. And so that, that's where kind of like, you know, it's possible for God to be three, but it's also possible for God to be one at the same time. So how do we understand that? How can we understand that? And one way that I understand that is actually by looking at myself. And I, I gave a, a given messages before on like our triune being and how we, we are like we are a mind, body, and spirit and those kind of things. We see it a little bit there. But I think for me, the easiest thing to understand is actually looking at me as a person. As you know what, I'm, I'm a son. I, I was born to parents. I am their male child. I am a son, right? And so I'm a son. But at the same time, I'm also married. I have a wife. That means I am a husband. And my wife and I have children together. And therefore, I am a father. I am a son. I am a husband and I'm a father at the same time. All of those things are a part of who I am, but I can tell you very much so that I treat my mom differently than I treat my wife. I treat my wife differently than I treat my kids and I treat my kids differently than I treat my mom. I act different in different situations. As a son, I seek to honor my parents. I seek to love them. I also seek out, you know, I, I, I'm their son. And w when I was growing up, I obeyed them. Well, mostly, sometimes I obeyed them, you know, like with my, my wife and I, I don't obey my wife. I mean, I, I, <laughs> That, that doesn't mean she is like, okay, wife, you have to obey me. That's not like we are in a partnership together. We are in a relationship together. So I, I don't obey my wife. I do the things she asks because I love her sometimes. Well, I always love her, but sometimes I do the things I ask. But I don't obey my wife like I obeyed my parents. And I certainly don't obey my children. I seek to have them obey me. And so these three things in my life, son, husband, and father all work together. They work in junk. They work in conjunction. They're always a part of who I am as one person. Yet there are three aspects of my life that function differently in different settings. And so that's just like one very simple and incomplete way for me to understand the Holy Trinity, the Trinity, because like there's God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. They are one and they're encompassed in this one being of God, but there are three different aspects, three different beings that work in different ways in different situations, but yet they're all one and encompassed in this idea of God. And so that's the Trinity. I hope I haven't confused you, but I, I want you, I do want you to understand that the Trinity is something that is well-founded in scripture and it is a part of who God is. And even though we don't fully understand it, that's okay because God is God and we can just trust him. We, we can just trust that if he says this is the way it is, we can trust that it is because we don't have to understand everything about him to understand a little bit about him and to know him and to follow him. So that's my that that's my little Sunday school tidbit for today. The the Trinity is a thing. It's a complicated thing, but it's a scriptural thing, and it's a part of who God is. And understanding um, as much of it as we can 
helps us to know and understand God. So I hope that you're seeking God this week, and I hope that he reveals himself to you. Thanks, and God bless.